Hey guys, Tina Watkins here from In Hand Equine Therapy. We are going to do a little series on your girth or cinch fitting for the next couple episodes. So we're excited to show you a bunch of different horses and point out some challenges that they have with their conformation to be able to fit your girth properly and tips and tricks on what to look for on your own personal horse. So join us on this journey and go ahead and comment and let us know on each video, is this like your horse? What have you you done to change this for your horse's um, comfort with the girth fit and uh, we'd also love to hear from you if you have questions on your horse's girth fit. Lots of times we look at the saddle and say to ourselves, is our saddle fitting properly? And um, we forget about the girth. And the girth, of course, is a huge factor because not only is the rib cage moving because of inspiration and expiration, but we're also looking at things like, is the horse able to uh, mobilize the rib cage and bend properly. Can the sternum lift up into the, um, and mobilize, pardon me, elevate the um, thorax? Um, and is there full range of motion available in the shoulder and elbow due to the attachments coming um, onto the rib cage where the girth is going to lay? So lots of things to consider. Enjoy this uh, little series and we'd love to hear back from you. I asked this rider not to brush her horse after her ride. She just got off and I wanted to show you the sweat mark of this girth that is laying on this horse. So first let's talk through where his natural girth line would be. He's another horse that has a smaller space behind the elbow before the rib cage itself starts to bow out and um, start into that um, costal arch. Um, when we're looking at the underside, he's long for a long time as well, and you can see that the um, area where the girth is sitting is literally right where his natural girth line sits. Now, if we were to look at this horse's barrel, where the edge of the girth is sitting here, I do think that this girth is coming back a little bit further, and that we could do a little bit better job with trying to find him a girth that either had some ergonomic to it that came slightly forward or changing the balance point in the saddle to actually be able to get the girth to come a little straighter. Now the balance point of the saddle is what these guys are working on. They do have a new saddle on order and the billets on this saddle currently are forcing this girth a little bit further back than they would like. And this horse is almost our ideal for fitting a girth too. So I'll get the front view in a second, but she has um, a natural dip um, here through her upper rib cage. It follows directly down to where her natural uh, girth line is on the bottom. It's all perfectly straight. And if we pan back slightly, the back of the scapula stays in front of that line. So it's nice and easy to be able to fit a girth to this horse. This would be our absolute ideal. If we come to the front here, oh, that's a great shot in the sunlight. You can really see where that natural girth line is. Here's our next horse to look at in our series on identifying the space you have to place your girth. This horse is quite a complicated horse because when we look from the bottom, you can easily see in the picture here where the natural girth line would be on him um, on the underside or pectoral area is going to be a little bit further back. But if you can see in the picture how wide the rib cage is here, he really only has a place to put a girth further forward. Let me see if I can come to the front. Yeah, that's a better shot. Um, and you can see how quickly the rib cage starts to um, bulge out or create the arch of the actual barrel. So this is a complicated horse because we would like the straps of the girth to be more in this region here to be able to stay in front of where the rib cage itself starts to bulge out. Um, and yet the placement on the underside is a little further back. So this would be a horse that would be a good candidate for one of those girths that comes down and then the 
disc or the weight bearing surface is a little further back on this horse. So more complicated for sure and important for us to really evaluate these things to make sure that we have the correct fit but also the most comfort because of course not only do we have our thoracic sling tissue here um, pectoral tissue major movers of the shoulder but we also have to have a horse that is able to breathe and doesn't have um, restriction through the barrel okay this mare when we look from the side does looks like she would have a long girth area as well because it's nice and flat at the bottom we don't see the ribs coming out um, into that costal arch till further down the rib cage but when you consider looking at her from the side you'll see that there actually is only a, quite a small area to put the girth in here because the ribs on the side spring out quicker. So not only are we looking at the horse from the bottom where we often think of evaluating if our girth is fitting, we also want to look at the horse from the side to see where the girth is going to be able to fit. Here we have a horse with a really long natural girth area. You can see that the spacing on this horse comes all the way back until the ribs start to spring out here. So on this horse, we have a really long area to be able to place our girth. Hey guys, it's uh, Tina and Kim from In Hand Equine Therapy. We wanted to chat with you today about your uh, horse's saddle and a little 10 point checklist that we can help you with. Here at In Hand Equine Therapy, Kim, Cassidy and myself are always trying to look for ways that we can bring you guys value and you can check things at home so that your home care program is as strong as possible. I think always in the spring and again in the fall, it's really important for you guys to look at your saddle and be able to decide if it's fitting well or if you need another team member to come in and help you to decide if that fit is where you want it to be. Today we're going to do our 10 point checklist and that will be available as a PDF that you can then take to your barn and check some of these things off and see where your, um, how your tack is fitting your horse uh, currently. Remembering as well that when you look at your tack, we really need to be looking at what's happening right now. If your horse has a big weight gain or loss, if you are really training hard and you have a large muscle gain, or if your horse happens to be off and you have a lot of muscle loss, we do need to make sure that we're reevaluating our tack every time we have a major change in our horse's uh, body shape. So that is something really important to remember. Our first thing that we're going to look at when you're doing your 10 point checklist for uh, your horse's tack and saddlery is what is my horse's attitude like? Has my horse's attitude changed? Is my horse giving me cues, even if they've been giving those cues for years, that they don't enjoy their saddle? So oftentimes, the team at In Hand will go out and look at client horses, and they'll say to us, oh, that horse has always been like that. They always turn around and try to bite me when I put the saddle on. They're always fussing around when I bring the saddle out. Even if something is a long-term chronic problem, we really invite you to assess that and decide, have I done everything I can to make sure that my horse's tack is fitting correctly and that there isn't anything that's changed. Sometimes you end up getting your horse's um, tack fit or ordering um, a beautiful custom saddle and end up with the um, saddle being fit several years ago and your horse changing shape. So whenever we're looking at doing our saddle fit, we really wanna look at what these guys are telling us. Are the cues that they're giving you something that is indicating that you do have a saddle fit problem? Remember too, that small things, especially for horses that are a bit stoic and don't um, express themselves quite as exuberantly, might be signs as well. 
So chewing at the bit, uh, grinding their teeth before you put your tack on, um, reacting when you're grooming the area, especially when you're coming in and underneath into the girth area can often be an area of tension for horses. Remembering that we're going to cinch the, or girth up the uh, saddle and put a lot of pressure there, horse still has to breathe and horse still has to move. So really consider even small signs of attitudinal change or um, cues that the horse is trying to give you as significant enough to have your tack checked. Our next point for you is going to be the state that your horse's top line is in. This is where you guys are going to look. And I know for horse owners, this can be quite daunting. I get a lot of people that say to me, I just don't know how to evaluate my horse's back. And that's totally fine. You can always have a professional out to be able to assess where your horse's back are, um, is at and what we are looking at um, for overall top line musculature right now. But just for a little checkpoint at home, we'd like you to just go ahead and take a line and draw it from the wither here all the way back to the croup and just see how much dip is in your horse's back. Every horse has some dip. Um, so we're just trying to evaluate that. Whether you ride English or Western, this is very important because either the panels of an English saddle or that swell of a Western saddle is going to need to be able to come down into this area. Now there's quite a bit of controversy when you read up about saddle fitting and looking at a horse standing still and not in movement. Because of course, horses do pick their back up slightly as they are being ridden. Now, um, that is definitely the case, but what we're looking for when we're doing static evaluations of your horse's back is where the bony structure is. Because you can see here, even if I lift my horse's back up like she would be coming into work in some form of collection, you can see that yes, yeah, some of the mid back flattens out, but we're still going to have the same shape throughout the tissue, or pardon me, throughout the bony structure, even when the tissue does lift up slightly. Now, of course, some people say to me, well, but you know, look, my horse's back can go all the way to there. Well, horses are not carrying their back that stiff and up in the, um, <clears throat> movement when you're working, they might hold it for a second like in a slide stop or some extreme collection like PF, but they're not holding that during the entire ride. So when we're evaluating the horse's back, we are looking at an overall evaluation. So we'd like to look at it there from the side and just see how much dips in there. You want to then be able to look at your saddle and see if that saddle is going to match. And we'll put the saddle on in a minute here so that you guys can see um, how the saddle is going to match that. The other thing we'd like you to do is go ahead and stand up on a stool behind your horse if it's safe and your horse will allow you. You'd like this horse to be as square as possible and its neck nice and straight. So this is often something to do with a buddy because horses often turn around to look at what you're doing. And you just want to see if there's major asymmetries from side to side. Again, we're not asking you guys to be veterinarians or professional body workers. We're just trying to look to see if there's something within the bony structure um, and the structure that the horse is currently holding in their posture that is going to cause a problem for the horse. The next thing we're gonna look at is your saddle's squareness. Now this is one that anybody can do. Do it with English or Western saddles. Um, we've got a couple English ones for you to see here, but you're gonna do the exact same thing if you have a Western saddle to be able to check. Get yourself a nice sturdy saddle stand, um, one that you can stand in front of to really be able to look at what we're um, going to point out for you today. First thing you're gonna start with is, we're gonna find the center of your uh, cantle and the center of your channel or gullet, depending on your terminology you use. And you wanna make sure that those are lined up. You can see here on this beautiful um, DK saddle that we've got a really square saddle where the middle of everything is lining up. 
Then you're going to look at your panels and you're going to see if these panels have the same angulation. Now this saddle is custom fit to my horse, which you saw in the um, shot we did before when we were looking at our horse's back. She is slightly asymmetrical. So this saddle is fit to her back. So you guys will see a couple um, differences from side to side to match that back. But when we are looking in general, we want to make sure that the panels are the same width. We want to make sure that they're the same height. Again, unless it's asymmetrically fit, it might be slightly different. And we want to make sure that those panels are coming off of the gullet from the same place. Now we've got some great examples for you here of asymmetrical saddles that aren't appropriate for um, uh, use on a horse any longer. Okay, you can see on this saddle here that the cantle itself is not even uh, close to being um, centered with the, where the middle of the channel or gullet is. So you can see that how off this saddle is from the back. And when you're looking at the panels, you guys can see that this panel here much thicker than this panel on this side. And you also see that the back of this panel is sewn closer into the gullet than the back of that panel. Okay, you can see on this saddle as well that when we're looking for the middle and where it's sewn, you can see the stitching comes up right here. And you can see as well that that is not in the middle of this cantle. And we've got two as well, totally different shapes of, of panels with much more depth here, shorter here. And we've got a rounded panel on this side and a flatter panel on this side. The other thing you want to look at for if your saddle is square is you want to actually take your eye from the back and you want to look forward and see if the pommel is in line. We'll get a really good shot of this coming up. You're going to see that this saddle is twisted throughout the tree where the uh, pommel is uh, further uh, to one side and the cantle further to the other side and you can really see the twist when you're looking straight down your saddle like that. Very important, especially when you're looking down the saddle to try to see what's happening with your pelvis. If you have one side of your pelvis that keeps falling down or you're always straightening your saddle to one side, make sure you just pop it off one day and check for squareness. You also want to do the same squareness test with the front of your saddle. You want to then be able to take the middle of the pommel and see if it's centered within that channel, which you'll see this saddle's not bad. There is, it is a little hard here because this leather is coming up. All of these saddles have been donated to in hand for teaching purposes because they are so crooked. So you want to see if the channel is in the center of that pommel and even more so from the front, you want to look at the angulation here coming down where the tree points are coming down. Again, both English and Western, you're going to do this. I know on Western, there's the larger forks here, but you are going to look down below the forks to look for the actual tree angle where it's actually going to um, contact your horse's back. When you look at this saddle, you'll see that we not only have two totally different angles, but we also have this saddle opening up at two different rates as well. So uh, we call that the flare that's in the actual tree. Um, and you can see when we get the close up of this uh, that we have two totally different um, panels on the saddle. Again, if this is custom fit for your horse and your horse has a significant problem, then you know we're gonna be okay with this. But if we're buying this saddle generally for horses, we are really going to um, um, have a problem with how asymmetrical these um, tree this tree is and the stuffing within this. We're now going to talk about gullet width and height. 
Part of this we're going to do on the horse, but before we move from the saddle stand, let's go ahead and just have a look um, at what we're talking about so that it's easy to point out on the horse itself. When we're looking at gullet width, we want to make sure that the horse's spine, and in this case, of course, we're at the front, so the horse's wither, is actually going to be able to have room to be able to flex and move while you're riding and doing the exercises you want to do. So we're going to see if your horse's wither is going to fit in this space. And when we put this on the horse, we want to make sure that we measure the how far the, um, away from the wither the um, actual saddle is sitting. Now, lots of you guys do that. You stick your hand in and you check for that height. But what we forget to do is we forget to check for the width, especially at the front. We need to not only make sure that we're checking for that height, but I need to put my hand on either side of the wither and we'll show you this on the horse and come back into the saddle because you'll see when we set this saddle on the horse that this gets narrow very quickly, too quickly for more, most horses withers. And so it's literally going to sit on the sides of the wither. So it's really important to be able to evaluate those two things, not just how far away from the wither the saddle is, but the width as well. So here we see that this saddle is fine in the height. We can put only two fingers, but still there's some spacing in there. But the big problem with this saddle is when I take my fingers and I go ahead and place them in. And as Kim zoom, zooms in, you'll really be able to see that it's literally touching the sides of her wither. If you guys can get your eye back to this area. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the um, gullet or channel width. And is it wide enough for your horse's spine? Here we've got three different saddles. And again, this goes with English or Western. Um, but we've got three different saddles. And I really want you guys to have a look at the difference in channel width for all of these saddles. Here we've got this beautiful DK saddle with tons of room to allow that spine to have full range of motion when you have your flexibility work uh, in your ride. Here we've got a pretty typical um, uh, little uh, flat seated saddle and look at how narrow that channel width is. There is not going to be very many horses that are that narrow through the top of their spine. Then we look here for a horse that has or a saddle that has just a little bit more space but again you'll see when we set these on the horse how this, even this width is still going to interfere with your horse's spine. So here we have that nice wide channel DK saddle on this horse. And you can see here, if we're looking at this horse's spine, I'll ruffle up the hair so that you guys can see exactly where the sides of the spine. Um, and she has turned her head, so of course the saddle's not sitting quite square. But you can see all the space there is there on this saddle. Then on this saddle, you can see that literally the two panels are sitting right on the horse's spine. And even with this saddle with a little bit more moderate type of um, channel or gullet width, you can see on that hair that we've ruffled up um, to indicate where the sides of the spine are, you can see that it's much too narrow still. Every saddle and every horse has a natural saddle position. This is the position where the saddle will be trying to get to during the ride. We get lots of clients that say to us, oh, my saddle looks fine when I put it on, but when I get off, it's either moved way far forward, way far back. And this is because the saddle is always going to find that sweet spot that its tree wants to sit in uh, regards to how your horse's back is shaped currently. Again, this could change with posture and as you put more um, muscle tissue on your horse's back, you might find that some of these things start to change, which is why it's very important to continue to work your way through your saddle checklist. So here with this saddle, to, to find any horse's natural saddle position and your saddle's natural position to sit. I'm just gonna to try to get her square again here. 
you're gonna put the saddle way far forward, okay? So this is ridiculously forward all the way on her shoulders. English or Western, you're going to do this. You're gonna take your hand and you're going to slightly rock your saddle. And you're just going to rock it from side to side, not pushing it back or forward. You're just going to rock it and rock it and rock it just like the horse is doing trot and the saddle is going to come to a stop where its natural saddle position is, okay? You really want to know that to see if the saddle is pinching in front or like I'd mentioned before, if your saddle is gonna sit way too far back or way too far forward. Now again, in this little series, we're not trying to make you guys saddle fitters by any means. We want you guys to be able to point things out that might um, indicate that you need another team member to come and look at your horse's saddle. Once your saddle has come to the uh, place that it wants to sit on the horse's back, let's do a short evaluation of if it's a good place it's sitting or if it's a bad place it's sitting. So we'd love to find the back of your horse's scapula or the shoulder blade, and we'd like to take our fingers, run them behind that shoulder blade, and make sure, now this is a dressage saddle, so the panels and the um, skirts are sitting very um, uh, upright. We're going to show you on the jumper saddle that the skirt could come further forward, but the actual panel still has to sit behind the horse's scapula. So we do want you to look at that. We'd like you to go ahead and look at your horse at the billets coming down from your um, saddle. And we wanna make sure that those billets are coming down and sitting in the horse's natural girth line. So you can see here on this horse that there's a slight indentation where the horse's natural girth would want to sit. We want to make sure that those billets are falling directly into that natural girth line. We're going to talk about balance in a second, but our last thing that we want to check with saddle location is if that saddle is staying in front of the last rib. Now on a western um, saddle, your skirts might go past the last rib, but we're looking at the actual tree itself. For English saddles, we need the paneling to be in front of that last rib. So we're gonna go ahead and go from the point of the hip, drag our fingers forward till we find where that last rib is. We're gonna run our fingers up and we're gonna ensure that that saddle is going to sit in front of that location. Okay, here we go with another saddle. We've placed it way far forward on the horse's shoulder. We're gonna start our rocking. Okay, we're gonna rock this saddle. I'm not pushing backwards. I'm only, I'm only rocking from side to side. And I'm gonna continue rocking this saddle until it goes ahead to stop. Okay, it looks like it's come to rest here. So this is going to be the natural position that this saddle wants to sit at. And you might say to me, oh, but Tina, I'm just gonna put a breastplate on the front of that and keep that saddle forward. Well, the only problem that we have with that is because that's where the saddle wants to get to, it will always be rocking on the horse's tissue, trying to make its way all the way back to where it naturally wants to sit. You'll also have a lot of pressure put on the front of the shoulder and the musculature coming down that is going to move the front leg when you have a saddle that's always trying to get past where it should sit. Now you guys can easily see that the back of this horse's scapula is here. So we are way far away from where this saddle should sit on this horse's back. If we lift up and look at where the billets are on this saddle, these billets are gonna come and your girth is going to wanna sit right on your horse's rib cage. And again, you might say to me, oh, I'll get one of those ergonomic girths, Tina, and I'll bring that girth forward. But again, your pressures are always going to be going to where the saddle wants to sit. Here, we're going to look at our um, last rib. I'm going to drag forward and find it, trace that up. And we can see that our rider's seat bones, if we allowed this saddle to move this far back in the ride, which oftentimes you do see people where they hop off partway through their ride and bring their saddle further forward again, is going to be putting a lot of pressure right at that thoracal lumbar junction where the thorax with the ribs 
are meeting the lumbar vertebrae with, of course, no ribs. And that is one of our weakest sp spots on the horse's spine. So we've got an immense amount of pressure that sits there, possibly creating some back soreness. Now let's look to see if your saddle's balance point is correct. Balance point is how your pelvis is going to sit in the saddle. And when we look at this, we want to find the sweet spot or the middle section where your seat bones are going to sit. And you're going to want to see if that is directly parallel to the ground. Okay, this is really important. Otherwise, your rider weight will be going back or you will be pitched forward. And remember, your weight is being distributed along the panels of the saddle. So if you're further forward, the weight is going to be further forward. If you're further back, the weight's going to be further back. You can see in this beautiful DK saddle that we have this absolutely perfect for balance point um, when we look at where the rider seat bones is going to be. Another little trick on this, if you are wondering um, how to train your eye better, you could take your lip chap or anything round. Some people use a pen, but if it does have the little hanger on it, it uh, it'll get caught. But you can take that lip chap and if I put it in the middle here, you can let it roll and you want that to sit right flat in the middle. You don't want this lip chap to have rolled and ended up way far here or for it to have rolled and ended up way far back. So you can see how then this lip chap ended up right in the middle of that saddle. The other thing to look at is to see where the pommel height of your saddle is versus your cantle. That's also a good plumb line to draw in your mind's eye to see what's happening. You can use a straight ruler or um, if you had a whip, you could use that as well, just to place on the pommel to see where it's sitting in the cantle. Uh, Danny Croach from DK always tells us that he would really like to see that pommel coming halfway up the cantle. Okay, here we have this saddle placed right behind the horse's scapula, okay, with the tree point behind the horse's scapula. Um, and we're seeing that the balance point of this saddle is quite downhill. We're going to look here to see where the rider seat bones would be and they would be all the way back here. And so we're seeing that the pelvis then would be in rotation. If we were going to show you, oh, and we, if we use Danny Croach's um, method of taking a straight line here from the pommel, we can see that the pommel is almost higher than the cantle. If we were going to look at where this saddle would sit correctly, we would have to lift this saddle all the way to here. Now, of course, some people say to me, oh, no problem, I'll put a couple shims behind this saddle. But when you look at the distance that you'd have to do on this particular saddle to get the pommel um, halfway up the cantle and our rider's seat bones flat, maybe I have it a little high there, okay, to there, we're looking at an inch, uh, maybe an inch and a quarter that we'd have to lift that. And to lift something that high, you're one, gonna need a lot of shims, and two, you're gonna start to feel a bit like the princess in the pea with having the shifting of that many shims to get the balance point of this saddle correct. All right, let's look at the lip chap method. No. So it's always very interesting where the lip chap goes. Now, of course, I might not have had that directly square, but I try to square it up with the twist of the saddle. And did you guys see how it really wanted to go off to the side? That also tells us about the straightness of this saddle, that there is a little bit of a twist in this saddle off to the side, and you'll see that from the back. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is lateral and longitudinal rock. What I'm, we're going to get you to do, both English and Western, is place your hand on the pommel of the saddle, place your hand on the cantle of the saddle, and we're going to press back and forth. And you want to press firmly to see if this saddle is going to have significant longitudinal rock. Okay, and you'll see in a second this saddle is not rocking, but you'll see in a second what I'm meaning because uh, we've got a couple pretty dramatic saddles. 
Then to check for lateral rock, you're going to keep your hands in the same place and you're going to go ahead and press from side to side to see if you've got any lateral rock. And this saddle's sitting quite square on this horse's back. Let's get you an example of a saddle that's rocking. Okay, gang, we're gonna go ahead again, put this saddle on. I'm gonna check that it's right behind the scapula so I know that's where it's supposed to sit. I'm gonna place my hand on the pommel and cantle and I'm just going to press down firmly on both. And can you guys see how much rock is in this saddle? Okay. Tissue does not like friction. And anytime there's rock on a saddle, you are going to be creating friction in your horse's back and you are have the potential to make your horse's back quite sore. She's looking over at me like, why am I wearing this terrible saddle? Okay, put your neck straight, sweetheart. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and we're gonna place our hands on and we're gonna look for longitudinal rock. Now this saddle is crazy moving behind and I'm barely even, you can do it with just one finger it's so bad um, so we do want to check to see that that saddle is going to sit square so that when you are riding your horse especially in the trot that has that uh, lateral gait that the saddle's not being pushed from side to side creating problems um, not only behind the scapula but along the entire top line Okay, the next thing we're going to look for is panel angle. This is a really important one for you guys to be able to look at. Now my horse has turned her head just a little bit to the side, so you will see that the saddle has shifted. Um, trying to keep her straight here. What we'd like to look at to, is to see how much surface area is actually contacting your horse's back. Now this is an air panel, so this panel is going to um, flatten out when rider weight goes on it, but we want to look to see what the actual surface area of the panel is um, and what part of that surface area is actually contacting the horse's back. So we had said earlier that the job of the panels is to take the weight of the rider and distribute it throughout the horse's back. So it's really important to have as much panel contacting your horse's back as possible. We also wanna see that that panel is the same shape as your horse's back. So you can see here on this DK saddle, now she's turned her head again slightly, but you can see here that we've got lots of surface area and that we have a balanced um, uh, amount of pressure from side to side with it matching the horse's shape of back. Let's grab another panel. So here's another saddle with another uh, different shaped panel. And can you guys see that the panel itself actually doesn't even touch the horse's back till back in here. So we're losing all of that surface area when it comes to being able to have weight distribution. And we can also see that these panels are quite rounded on the bottom. Bottom. So do you see that all of this part of the panel is not touching the horse's back? And we have that same situation if you look to the inside where that part of the panel is not touching the horse's back. These are absolutely essential things. And sometimes people say to me, oh yeah, but when I push it down, look, it's all touching. Yes, but now there's unequal weight distribution where we have this part of the panel into the horse's back more than we have these rounded sides. So this particular shape of panel, and we've already pointed out that these are two different panels on the same saddle, but this particular shape of panel would end up making this horse's back sore. All right, here's another example of a set of panels. These are very flat panels. Now, when you look at them, you might say to me, okay, well, the weight distribution looks better from the back, but in a second, we're gonna have Kim come to the side and we're going to see how the weight distribution through the side is not good. Here on this side, because we have two different shaped panels, now the horse is turning her head slightly, but you can see that we have nothing contacting the horse all the way down through this side because we do have two totally different panel shapes on this saddle. As we come and look at the side of this saddle, we can see traditional bridging where we've got pressure points at the back, pressure points at the front, and no um, pressure in the midline of this saddle. So that is what's referred to as bridging, where we do have the, the um, weight distribution only at the front and the back. And this is an excellent example of a saddle 
that is bridging. The last thing that we want to talk about is you might have an excellent saddle, but it doesn't fit your horse. So many times um, the in-hand team has gone out and we've seen uh, a, a client horse and we've looked at their saddle and they've said to us, oh, I bought a top quality saddle. I did all my due diligence. I know that this is an excellent saddle but it just might not be the right saddle for your horse. And it might have been the right saddle for your horse at a time, but the horse has either matured and changed, his skeletal structure has changed if he was still growing when you bought the saddle, or maybe you got him and he was under muscled and now you have him in great shape. His back's come up and everything's working great. Always remind yourself that it might not be just the type of saddle that you did all your due diligence. It might literally be that it is just the wrong saddle for that horse. The other thing that we want to remind ourselves of is make sure it's the right saddle for you. Many, many times we've heard where people say, it fits the horse, I'll tough it out. The problem with that is, is when you're not sitting balanced or if you're not comfortable, you will be using your body in ways that will be interfering with the horse and will cause problems. So we really want to make sure that you're comfortable, the horse is comfortable, and everybody is able to work together as a team to see if we can not only get the best out of our horses, but allow them to last for a long, long time and for you to be able to be as effective as a rider as possible. Hopefully this was a great little series for you guys. We at In Hand, both Kim, Cassidy and myself, are always willing to answer questions, so we'd love to hear back from you. We also have our social media sites where we um, have several posts that are not only inspirational, but also educational. And we have an education platform at inhandequinetherapy.podia.com. We'd love for you to visit there for both free content as well as some fun courses, both for professionals and for the horse owner. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch you hopefully in the arena.